Rebuilding a broke case can be easy. Rebuild this section of it, so follow along for the rebuild. I love getting stuff like this when it's broke and they're already telling you that it's scrap. To see if you can transform it into something still workable, still usable. Especially for a garage welder like me or a garage fabricator. It's always good for the challenge to see if I'm up for it. So let's see if I am up for it as we dig through this one. But I would love to know what kind of stuff you guys do in your garage as well. Whether it's some kind of welding or fabricating or just building. Leave me some comments so I know what you guys are doing. And when you're working with cast like this, it's always an extra challenge to you. Some of this stuff has been sitting in oil and grease and goo. And you got to try to pick your battles when you're working with this stuff. So it's pushing you just a little bit harder every time. And if it's really old, it's really pushing you. Just a lot of work trying to get everything all fit up and locate it back where it's supposed to be. So you can get it tacked up and welded. And it's going to fight you all the way through. And then a couple of shameless plugs. We are a Rock Mount Welding Alloys affiliate. So we're using this Neptune TIG here. And I find that it works really good when you're welding stuff like cast. But I recently got this CK Rolled Wide Flex Lock. And if you do anything like this, it's a phenomenal torch. And then my latest toy, these Game Changer gloves. And that blue finger keeps you from getting hot when you're, when you're welding and you got your finger roasted on it. So when you're knucklehead like me and you're welding and you got your fingers on hot stuff and you can't figure out why you're burning, they definitely help with that. We gotta love our toys. Alright, so we kind of got it glued down right now. Got to brush off the crud. So we got the first, first beads down. Might hand work that just a little bit, just to make sure there's no voids, and then keep building it up. And I would love to tell you that that's the first tungsten I've ever put in that gun, that I've never touched the filler rod to it, and I've never stuck it to the parts. But I think we all know that's a lie. And when you're welding aluminum, it's definitely a lot different than when, it, when you do it to steel. But that's all part of the learning process, especially for a garage welder. So we have it all built up now. Now let's work it down and see if we got to add any more aluminum to this. I can't tell you how many times as an apprentice I've used a rotary burr and not always successful. So it's always good to get a little practice in, trying to get your hand right when you're doing that. Because sometimes you slip and well, you gouge things. I still do it today. I gotta fill this back in and form that. Get a finished contour. Do you work with your hands also? I'd love to know what you do. If you're working at home or if you're doing it professionally, what do you do with your hands? This country needs more people to work with their hands. So if you are, please leave me a comment. So we just built the rest of the area back up once we filled the hole in, hand worked it. Of course it will never look as good as when it was first casted. But from there all they got to do is drill the hole back in. I marked it to make sure that we had the material there. So that's just welding up. Uh, I'm not even sure what engine this is out of. We just built up that one mounting bracket. They can take it from here. Need any other welding tips? I'll see you in this video. Been another edition of 4x4 Fab Shop. See you there.